Allah from the bottom of our hearts. We start by praising Him, thanking Him for all the blessings that He had and He has bestowed upon us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ni'mah of the sahha, of the health, the ni'mah of the family, the ni'mah of the food, the drink, and everything we're able to count and we're unable to. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Around the corner is a special day of the year, which is Yawm Ashura. It's going to fall on Monday, and Ashura is the 10th of this month. And it's, it's, it's a special day, and the Prophet ﷺ recognized it as a special day when he came to Medina. And he found people were fasting. And he asked, why was everyone fasting? And they told him, this is a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala نَجَّ اللَّهُ بِهِ مُوسَى مِنْ آلِ فرعون. This is the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Musa and his followers and Bani Israel from the harshness and from the tyranny of Fir'aun and his soldiers. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ana awla bi Musa minhum. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I am indeed and we are indeed more worthy to celebrate something for Prophet Musa. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes from the same line of prophets. Musa and him comes with the same message, not with the actual deformed message that was in Arabia. So the Prophet ﷺ said, نَحْنُ أَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْهُمْ We are more worthy to follow Musa ﷺ. So he fasted that day. And he recommended also to fast the day before so that it does not resemble the Jews. The Jews used to fast only that day. So he told the Muslims you can fast the 9th and the 10th and maybe even the day that follows. So all of this is the sunnah of Rasulullah ﷺ. And in fact, it was... And it was a command from Rasulullah to fast the day of Ashura until Ramadan, until fasting became an obligation in Ramadan, then he gave the option of Ashura. But before that, it's something that the Prophet and the Sahaba used to do. So <clears throat> I want to take with in this celebration of celebrating the Rasul, a Rasul, a great Nabi, which is Musa alayhi salam, mentioned over 70 times in the Quran. His story is mentioned over 70 times, but his name and the in different instances that refers to him are even more than that. So there is no prophet that is mentioned as much as Prophet Moses, as Prophet Musa alayhi salam. He's the most mentioned prophet in the Quran. And there's so many lessons that we can take out of the story of Musa alayhi salatu salam. And by the way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just a reminder, Allah says about the stories of the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةً Indeed, in their stories, there's a ibrah. There is a lesson, there is a reminder for you to take in your own life. It's not just a good night story, it's not just an entertainment story, but it's a story that you can derive so many lessons. That's why Allah left so many details that doesn't really matter. Allah focuses on the message, the ibrah. And the word ibrah is from the word ubur in the Arabic language. And ubur means to cross the bridge. That's what the Arabs use that word for, Abur. And the Ibra means so that you will cross that bridge and you take the lesson from the history to the present. You cross that bridge and you take the Ibra. So Musa alayhi salam is a great human being even before it was revealed to him to be a prophet. There are three major lessons that I want us to take from today's khutbah, inshaAllah. Number one lesson that we're going to focus on. There's so many lessons, but we're going to focus on these three, inshaAllah. Number one is that Allahu ghalibun ala amrih. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's will overpowers any other will. Allah's will overcomes any other will in this universe. No matter who it was, no matter what it was, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will will always pass through and will always overpower anything else. This is lesson number one to remember. Lesson number two is going to be about teamwork. And that you cannot make it on your own. Sometimes we think we're strong enough, we can make it on our own. Whether it's in our deen, or in our businesses, or in our lives even, in our personal lives, in our emotional lives, we cannot make it on our own. We are social beings, and we depend on each other. And Allah created us in congregation, so that because we need each other, we depend on each other. 
Number three, Allah's presence in Musa alayhi salam's life. Or you can say, Musa's presence with Allah. The consciousness, the God consciousness of Musa alayhi salam as he goes through his life and how much he's focused on Allah. Those are three lessons that we are going to personally take. So, the first one is we know, we all know the story of Musa alayhi salam. Even if we come from a Christian background, we have this subhanAllah story is mentioned in all the, uh, uh, the, the books of Allah, the, the holy revelations, in the Injil and the Torah. So, we know that Fir'aun, and this is from the Israeliyat, that he saw a dream in which one of the children of the Israelites, one of the children of Bani Israel will grow up one day and will challenge his kingdom and will kill him. So he woke up with anxiety and he called upon his assistants and he said, this is what I saw. Therefore, I want, he, came with to, he, came, he arrived to a decision saying that I want to kill all the children of Bani Israel. I don't want one child from Bani Israel to grow up. I want to eliminate the next generation because I don't want what I saw in my dream, which is a child growing up and killing me and challenging my kingdom. And subhanAllah, tyrants are always in fear. Tyrants and people who have oppressed others, people who have dhulm in their life, they are always in fear of something coming back at them. SubhanAllah. Anyone who have hurt anyone, they are always in that state of fear. It comes in different levels. But they know, even those tyrants, they know that the law of this world we are living in, what goes around comes around. And what I have, when I hurt someone today, someone will hurt me tomorrow. And if I think I'm the strongest today, someone will come and will show me and will teach me a lesson that there's someone stronger than me. So, the assistant referred to Fir'aun and he said, but if we kill all the children of Bani Israel, then there's no next generation to serve you. There's no next generation of slaves. So Fir'aun said, let's do half. We will kill one and let another live. This way we kind of control the next population. And I don't know how it made sense to him, but it made sense just to control the population. So why am I saying this? Because I want to take actually the lesson out of how Allah's power overcame the power of Fir'aun. How the will of Allah overpowered the will of Fir'aun. Because the last thing that he wanted is to raise that child that he was afraid of in his own castle. And this is what happened. And that's a very, very interesting part of the story. In which how the last thing you want comes at you. But it's not always a bad thing. Because in the case of uh, the mother of Musa, alayhi salam, the last thing she wanted is that, firstly, to put the baby in the basket and in the river. And then she doesn't know where that basket is going. But if there's one last thing that she wants, is that basket going to the backyard of Fir'aun. And this is exactly what happened. In fact, the sister of Musa alayhi salam, when she followed that basket and she saw that it arrived at Musa's, at Fir'aun's castle in his backyard, and the woman picked it up, she actually ran back to her mother saying, we are doomed. The baby is in the hands of Fir'aun now. And Fir'aun, subhanAllah, wanted to kill that baby. And he knew that this baby is from Bani Israel. They're just putting their babies in the rivers because they don't want the soldiers to kill them because the soldiers were killing the babies. Right? So, but, but what he didn't know that the wife of Fir'aun, Asiya, she fell in love with that baby. And they couldn't have children. And she said, please, Fir'aun, let us raise this baby. And this baby will be raised based on your desire and your manhaj and your kingdom. He will serve you and he will serve us. We will raise him. But he didn't know that he was raising. This is the blind spot. The blind spot that he didn't know that this baby, he was killing all the babies outside. And the baby that was going to grow up and challenge him was right next to him. Not just growing up in his castle, learning from the best teachers, becoming a warrior and getting the best education, which is the education that was being, was, was, was being taught at the castle of Fir'aun. 
So Allah's will, when it comes, people become blinded. They say, إِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَدَرْ عَمِيَ الْبَصَرْ When the qadr befalls, then people can become blinded. They don't see what's coming next. When Allah wants something to happen, even if He had to blind people, be unaware of something, because Allah wants to make something pass. In the case of the mother of uh, uh, Musa, alayhi salam, Allah says, حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْمَرَضَىٰ Allah promised her, that despite how impossible that situation looks, he's in the hands of Fir'aun, Allah promised her that we will bring back your baby to you. Not when he just grows up, no, no. Very soon, you will be nursing him, not any other woman. حَرَّمْنَا عَلَيْهِ الْمَرَضَىٰ which means that baby did not accept any breast, did not accept any mother, until his sister came and she said, I know someone that, can, that he might accept, and they invite the mother eventually, and he only accepts the breasts of his mom. SubhanAllah. This is how Allah brought Musa in the lap of his mother again, shortly after she put him in the river, because that was the promise of Allah. So you see, the will of Allah will always pass through, will always overpower and overcome anything. So, the story, by the way, the story of Musa salam, is filled with what I was saying. Like the last thing you want is for something to happen, but then it happens, and then something good comes out of it sometimes. Right? Because Musa, for example, what was the last thing that he wanted after he... Uh, uh, left Egypt and then he lived in Median for 10 years what was the last thing he wanted the last thing that he wanted is to go back to Fir'aun to face Fir'aun again and Allah told him that you are going to face Fir'aun the last thing that he wanted so there's there's a lot of lessons if we're gonna put that use that slogan the last thing that you want can happen but then something good will come out of it even when it looks really impossible lesson number two is teamwork now, Musa is Kalimullah, the only prophet that is actually mentioned in the Quran that Allah spoke to him directly. How much power is that? Allah speaking to you. You actually hear the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But some say, some scholars interpret that he didn't actually hear a voice, it was a communication to the heart, but he knew it was something just beyond that any of human experience. Because it's an experience that only Musa experienced and no one can refer to. Right? Despite how the communication was between Musa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah spoke to him directly without any intermediaries. And that's so much power. Allah is saying, Inni ma'akuma asma'u wa ara. I am with you. And he knows that Allah is with him. Despite all of that power that he's given, he says, Ya Allah, I cannot make it on my own. Waj'alli waziran min ahli haruna akhi. Ushdud bihi azri wa ashrikhu fi amri. He says, Ya Allah, make Harun my partner in this. I cannot go through this on my own. I need someone with me. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even said the same thing. He said, Allahumma a'izz al-Islam bi ahad al-Umarayn. Oh Allah, honor Islam with one of the Umars. I need someone. I need someone strong next to me. I can't do this on my own. But what are you talking about? Allah, the Lord of the heavens, is the one who's with you. But no, you need people with you. You cannot do this on your own. You need a team, right? And this is the whole purpose of da'wah, you know, da'wah. Da'wah is strengthening the community. Da'wah brings people into the deen. And strength, we, we are strong with each other, not individually. Especially when it comes to our deen. Imagine we had no people coming to Jum'ah. We will not have this. We will not feed from this power. But we come here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanAllah made it an obligation upon us to meet here every week so that we are reminded that we are an ummah and that we are strong with each other. Lesson number three. Musa alayhi salam being so cognizant of Allah. In Surah Al-Qasas only, there's like about six du'as right after each other. Every time something happens to Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam remembers Allah and he has a dua for it. 
I, I just want to mention one thing before I actually get into the dua. How did Musa learn the dua? How did Musa learn about Allah? It's the mother, Asya. She was a righteous woman married to a tyrant, Fir'aun. But she was on the religion of Ya'qub. And she believed in the religion actually of the Israelites, which basically is the line of Ya'qub and Yusuf. So she raised Musa without Fir'aun knowing on Tawheed, on La ilaha illallah. And he learned about the previous prophets and he himself became so religious and so righteous, the complete opposite of what Fir'aun wanted. And he would go downtown Musa السلام, and he would do khayr. He would uh, participate in al-a'mal al-salihat. He would participate and he would uh, help the needy. He would feed the poor. He would support and people knew him. They knew that this was the adopted child of Fir'aun, but he's originally from Bani Israel. That's why he always goes back to his people. And Fir'aun saw that and he knew that and he hated that. That's why the moment Musa made that mistake when he killed one from, uh, uh, from Al Fir'aun, when he killed a person from Al Fir'aun, Fir'aun right away said, kill him. He became wanted. His blood became wanted right away. Because, because Fir'aun was fed up with Musa. This is something from the background, from the Israeliyat that we don't think of. Why did Fir'aun just all of a sudden wanted to kill him for the first mistake? He doesn't consider it a first mistake. He sees Musa as someone who's opposing him. When he goes downtown and he helps the poor and he helps the, Bani, the Israelites, that was not a good thing for Fir'aun. And subhanAllah, all the prophets had this love for the masakeen. And the Prophet Muhammad made a dua. The Prophet Muhammad even made a dua for that. Ya Allah, grant me the love of the masakeen. Wahsurni ma azumrati al masakeen. The Prophet said, and make me and resurrect me on the day of judgment with the masakeen. Allahu Akbar. What is this thing about the masakeen? The love of the masakeen, loving to be around the poor, loving to be around the needy. He hanged out with them. He helped them. He supported them. Abu Huraira was a poor person who accompanied Rasulullah wherever he goes. And many others. And subhanAllah, the, 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 the hearts of the prophets are very soft. That they will have a long history with the masakeen before becoming prophets. And this is what Khadija told Rasulullah when he came back shivering and was, was confused about what happened to him. And she said, Wallahi la yuqseek Allahu abada. She said, Allah will never let you down, O Muhammad. You help the needy, you support the poor, and you do good things in the community. This must be something good that's coming your way. Right? So subhanAllah, some, that's just a quick reminder of loving the masakeen. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make your heart love the needy and the poor and make them love you. When you gain their love, you gain sincere love. And Islam became victorious on the shoulders of the masakeen and the rich, both. But without the masakeen, they were the first to really carry this message on their shoulders along with some rich ones. So Musa السلام, was always with Allah even before he became a prophet. When he killed the person by mistake, he said, Oh Allah, I have oppressed myself. Dua. This is before he became a prophet. He's making these, these Islamic duas, right? So Allah, oh Allah, forgive me. Allah forgave him. Then when he is told to leave Egypt because he's wanted. Oh Allah, with what you have bestowed upon me from strength and status and power and health, I will not, I will not turn away from the tyrants. I will always face them and I will always challenge them. Have you ever thought about this dua? Oh Allah, for the health that you have given me, I will continue to serve you. I will continue to volunteer in the community. Ya Allah, for the ni'mah of the money that you have given me, I will continue to donate. I will continue to exhaust my wealth in your sake. Right? Refer to the ni'mah and say, Ya Allah, because you have given me that, I promise I will continue doing this. So this is like, look how, how focused he is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he walked out, eventually, فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبْ قَالَ رَبِّ نَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Oh Allah, save me. 
deliver me from the tyrants, from the zalimin. With Allah, right? May Allah guide me to the right direction. Imagine running into the desert with no provision, not knowing where you're going. He made this dua saying, Ya Allah, guide me along the way. And when he reached Madian, and he, so, uh, he helped the two ladies with the water. فَسَقَى لَهُمَا ثُمَّ ثُمَّ تَوَلَّى إِلَى الظِّلِّ فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي لِمَا أَنزَلْتَ إِلَيَّ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَقِيرٍ After he helped them, he went under the shade of a tree. He sat there and he made a dua. He said, Ya Allah, for all what you have given me, I am poor. I am in need of what you have given me. So he was focused with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was with Allah. He was raised on La ilaha illallah. And before becoming a prophet, he was ready to become a prophet. That's why even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 40 years in, until he was ready to become a prophet. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thumma alhamdulillah. اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه Finally I want to take one final lesson from the uh, part of the story in which they reached the sea and behind them was the enemy فرعون and his soldiers were coming to crush them and then the sea was in front of them and it seemed extremely impossible. It seemed that there's no way out. قَالُوا إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ The Bani Israel, they said, that's it. We are done. We are dead meat. We're done. And Fir'aun was coming with the soldiers from behind. And what did Musa, with his yaqeen, what did he say? قَالَ كَلَّا إِنَّ مَعْيَ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ And kalla in the Arabic language is a firm no. No. Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. Indeed, my Lord is with me and he will guide us. Just like he guided us before that. Just like he guided me when I was in the basket. Just like he took care of me and raised me. Just like we were all able to reach to this point, Allah will not fail us. Inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. And this is a beautiful reminder and a beautiful lesson to focus on the solution rather than focusing on the problem. That's what they say in the society. Focus on the solution and don't focus on the problem. You know what? There's even a higher level than that. Better than even focusing on the solution, which is going to come automatically. Focus on Allah and do not focus on the problems. Even when you do a ma'asiyah, when you fall short, you know you have sinned, you have done something wrong. Your next focus is Allah. Not your sin. Don't get stuck with your sins. Don't get stuck with what is impossible. And with too many calculations. But focus. Now shift your focus with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the way he said it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, إِذَا أَذْنَبَ أَحَدَكُمْ ذَنْبًا فَلْيَقُمْ فَلْيَتَوَضَّقْ وَلْيُصَلِّي رَكَعْتَيْنَ That if someone commits a sin, then get up, make wudu, and pray two rak'ahs to ask Allah for his forgiveness. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah If someone falls into sin, shift your focus. Now focus on wudu, on salah, and on dua. That's your next step. But subhanAllah, this is a really important... It doesn't matter how many times you have committed that sin. It doesn't matter how many times you have fallen short. Get up again and focus again on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Musa was doing. He's focusing on Allah. He didn't say something will happen, a miracle will happen. He said, Allah is with us. Allah is with us. Similarly, you should say, Allah will forgive me. Innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim And say, Ya Allah, you are big and my sins are small. My sins, no matter how big I think they are, they are small before you, Ya Allah. Before your rahmah, that is vast. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So the lessons that we took today from the story of Musa alayhi salam, that always remember that Allahu ghalibun ala amrih, Allah's power and His will will always overcome any other will in this universe, including your will. Sometimes you don't know it, right? The scholars, they say, Anta turidu, ana urid, wallahu yaf'al ma yurid. 
right? I want and you want, I want something and you want something, and in the end of the day, Allah does whatever He wills. Right? That's, that should be firm in our hearts. Number two lesson is teamwork. You cannot make it on your own. You always need the environment. You always need the support. You always need the community. Number three lesson is you should always be present with Allah. In all your life events, in all your situations, find a way to make dua. Because dua is true power. Dua, yani you can tell that Musa couldn't make it without the dua. His dua is in every single part of the story. There's, he has a dua, and that dua is answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make a way to dua in every single situation you go through in your life. And finally, focus on Allah. And focus on the solution. And Allah is the solution. Right? He will always give you a way out of the problems you're going through. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Inna Allah wa malaikata wa salluna ala nabiyya ayu alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Labbayka Allahumma salli wa sallimu an'im wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt wa afina fi man afayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt wa barik lana fi